Well, good morning, everybody. It's fantastic to see so many people here this morning um, with such enthusiasm for coming and tackling what is a real human rights issue, something about which we in the City Council feel passionately um, and an issue that is long overdue for being looked at in this country. Um, I'm delighted to see that there are so many of the male species here um, because so often this is seen as a women's issue and it isn't a women's issue, it's a human rights issue. It's an issue for men, for women, for parents, for all of us to actually be concerned about. This conference is about ending female genital mutilation in Coventry. Not about making the situation better, but about ending a practice that should not be tolerated for the women and girls in our city. It aims to raise awareness of female genital mutilation amongst professionals and community members, to educate individuals about the practice and the very harmful consequences for women and girls. This conference will empower all of you, I hope, to support Coventry's vision of ending female genital mutilation and ensure that it remains a high priority within all of our daily roles. It will ensure that all of you as professionals and community members are aware of the support available from local specialists. So why are we here today? Well, Coventry City Council, I'm very proud to say, is leading the way in tackling this issue. A number of local agencies have been working hard for years to raise awareness of this issue and to protect girls at risk and support women affected by it. We're here today to really raise the game, to raise awareness of female genital mutilation and the numbers of local women and girls affected by it or at risk of undergoing the procedure. I want every one of you to be able to leave today with a good knowledge of female genital mutilation, what it is and its very harmful consequences. Protecting the human rights of women and girls is everyone's responsibility. Now, there are a lot of myths about female genital mutilation. People say that it's a religious practice. Categorically, it isn't. It's a 2,000 and more year old practice that undermines a woman and girl's right to choose how they live their lives in some communities. It has never been so important as today that the fight to ban this really damaging practice causes severe physical, psychological and emotional pain is one. Female genital mutilation is recognized internationally as a violation of the human rights of girls and women. It reflects deep-rooted inequality between the sexes and constitutes an extreme form of discrimination against women. It is nearly always carried out on minors, and some of you will have heard the terrible tales of young girls and the experiences that they have when they're cut at an early age. It's always a violation of the rights of children. This practice also violates, violates a person's rights to health, security, and physical integrity. The right to be free from torture and cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment. And the right to life when the procedure results in death. FGM has been proven to have devastating impact on women and girls' emotional, physical, and mental health and well-being. It also limits their opportunities in life as it affects their education, their ability to participate in politics and makes them less likely to be able to go out to work, meaning they always depend on others. It affects local women and girls. It's estimated that 170,000 women and girls are living with FGM in the UK and 65,000 girls aged 13 and under are at risk of FGM in the UK. In the last five months, 
between 1% and 2% of all deliveries at our local hospital, university hospitals, have been to women affected by FGM. 1% to 2%. And I have to say, one must give credit to UHCW for the way they are so proactively fighting this issue and tackling this issue and collecting the statistics that have actually been very hard to get hold of before. So, 1% to 2% of all deliveries. From January 2014 to date, 57% of FGM referrals to West Midlands Police came from Coventry. And this is because we are proactively tackling this issue. According to the 2011 census data, 3% of children aged 0 to 15 and 7% of women aged 16 to 49 living in Coventry were born in regions likely to be affected by FGM. Now, it's really important that this issue has political support. And it was first brought to my attention as Cabinet Member for Health by Fidel Tukruri, who you will be hearing from a bit later. And I credit him with raising this issue with me and making me aware of how important it was. And so at a full council meeting in December 2013, we took a motion through full council that was supported absolutely unanimously across the piece by all political parties and, in, and really spoken of very powerfully in the chamber by men as well as women saying that we as a city council, as politicians, will do our utmost to eradicate this practice in our city. So it's had cross-party support, all councillors supporting it, and we will commit ourselves to ensuring professionals have the support to report it and communities that are empowered to oppose it. Of course, we can't do it on our own. We can, I can stand here and pontificate all I like. It's not me that can do it. We have to work with communities because FGM is a social convention. And the social pressure to conform to what others do and have been doing is a strong motivation to perpetuate the practice. Therefore, any cultural shifts in practicing communities must come from communities themselves. When men and women, elders and leaders in communities come together to tackle old perceptions, change is possible. And in fact, we have community organizations that you'll see at the side there who are very proactively tackling this issue, I'm proud to say, and working in Coventry to do so. It's absolutely vital that women feel they are supported when they say no to FGM without being shunned by their community. And without communities abandoning FGM practices, it is likely to continue. Coventry has been working alongside Celestine Celeste, the community organization that's represented over there, Voluntary Action Coventry, local community leaders, both male and female, and key stakeholders to ensure that FGM is tackled in a culturally sensitive and appropriate way. It is through this strong partnership approach that Coventry will make a difference to women and girls affected by FGM. By the end of today, I hope that you all have the confidence to broach female genital mutilation with women and girls from practicing communities that you interact with. I want you to leave knowing how and where to access help and support with FGM related concerns and how to report and record potential cases. I want you to take your learning from today and implement it into your daily role and influence organizational change where possible. But most importantly, I want you to continue to protect vulnerable women and girls from this dangerous practice and support communities to oppose it. I'm sure it's going to be a really informative and fantastic day I hope you all enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it myself. Um, and I know we've got some fantastic speakers to follow now. So with having said that, welcome everybody.